You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you. I'm Marshall Fries here with Gabriella TV, and I am talking to... I'm Adam Larson. <laughs> Adam Larson, organizer, co-organizer of the, the Brickyard Music Festival. Or what do you call this thing? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a jam and an open mic and uh, just kind of a, a collective gathering of uh, musicians and artists every Wednesday. So I guess my first question is like, where did this start? How did you guys start organizing this event? Um, well, it kind of started with an idea from well, I was here last summer and I would just kind of hang out on the beach here. And uh, I'm a musician and I have been for half my life. It's pretty, pretty and I've been hanging out with a lot of great musicians on the island here. And uh, this is kind of one of the places I would just come and watch the sunset. Um, so I kind of decided at the beginning of the summer that it would be a, you know, we, we, we needed more outdoor venues basically. So this was kind of a, a space after hanging out here long enough, I said we should just set up here. And uh, yeah, it, it started with a, it, it started with a, a, a market tent, um, and then it kind of turned into into this into this stage that we've kind of built ourselves. Uh, do you live here on the island, then? Yeah, I live here on the island here. Are you from Gabriola, or did you grow up here? Uh, no, I'm, I'm from Edmonton. Oh, okay. And uh, pretty much everyone who helps set up this event is from different places in the world. Okay. Uh, none of us are actually from the island here. <laughs> so uh, what brought you to the island in the first place? Uh, well, my originally I went to Camp Miriam here as a kid. Oh, okay. Uh, so I've been coming here all my life. Um, so it kind of just ended up being a place during the pandemic uh, that I thought would be kind of a, a nice haven and a, a new a new start um, yeah. awesome so and you said you uh you've been playing music half your life what what are uh where do you play in a band as well i think it uh yeah i play in a project here on the island called the infinite atom uh a-t-o-m um, and that's uh, a lot of the guys that help run this program are, are part of it um, and we're kind of part of part of a, a collective group called gamma which is the gabriel assembly of musical artists uh, we put on Brickyard every week. Uh, we used to run the Monday golf club jams. Um, as well, we run something called Unplugged, which is a, a, a monthly series every three to four weeks. Uh, we bring in artists from the islands that we go and tour on. So we go to the different golf islands with Gamma. And we organize different open mics, jams, and shows on these islands. We meet artists there, and then we invite them here. And that series is called Unplugged. Um, and so they, they come and play and it's been at the reservoir stage so far uh, but we'll be moving it into an indoor venue uh, as, as, the, as the weather changes. And you said you set this up every Wednesday. It seems like a pretty big job. Um, can you talk a little bit about like what it takes to run this, this, uh, this set up the stage, run the sound, organize this event every week? Yep. Um, so we get here at four o'clock in the afternoon uh, and we're here till about midnight, uh, sometimes as late as one o'clock in the morning. Uh, so half the, half the whole shift is really just setting up and tearing down. Um, and then the other, the other half in the middle is, is the whole show and event. Um, so this kind of conception of, of, of this stage here, this was an idea by, uh, by the Comfortably Sauvage, Johnny Sauvage and myself. Um, and with his help, he kind of stripped all these poles and we kind of tried a different couple of different setups and, and ways that we wanted to put all of these, these poles. Uh, and then we came up with this kind of a, a soccer type stage. Um, and it's been, it's been helping us so far. We, we didn't have this last summer, but uh, we, we decided to try something new this year. Um, so basically, it starts with our setup at four o'clock. At six o'clock, we start the potluck. So we asked the community, everyone in the community, to bring one dish. Uh, we set up here on this table and a couple other tables. Um, we have kind of a community dinner starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, and then we start live music at 7 o'clock. Okay. Is this, is this, like, are you a music promoter for your job? Is this what you do for your living? This um, feels like a lot of work <laughs> in the evening. Yeah, uh, yeah there's, there's, uh, there's not too much of a, uh, a financial reward from it. Uh, but this is something that I enjoy doing and I treat it as a full-time job, uh, but it's kind of a full-time volunteer job. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, I wanted to ask just kind of like um, about the economic factors for musicians and, and organizers. You said there's not much of a financial reward. How do you guys manage to um, 
Are you paying for stuff out of your pocket to a certain extent? Because it's like a labor yeah. of love. So, so a lot of the gear that we've accumulated for these programs, uh, it took us several months to accumulate all the lighting and sound, uh, audio equipment, everything we needed to make this run uh, was actually through the donations that we receive from attendees and people who are coming to these shows, people who are coming to these programs. Everyone puts in $10, $20, um, and that money, a lot of that money goes back towards the program. Uh, and we take we take a couple bucks for ourselves at the end of the night. Um, and so that, that kind of helps us kind of get through the week. <laughs> so you guys are you're, you're asking for donations at your events and then you're actually taking that money and using it to purchase equipment and stage stuff and it's stuff that you essentially share back with the community, right? Yeah, so essentially the community is helping create these programs themselves. So when they're putting in the money for these things, um, it allows them to kind of see that, that their money is actually going back into the program and they're actually helping create the program in a way themselves just by attending and, and donating. Um, so why, uh, why is, I guess, community important to you? Why do you, why do, you do this every week? <laughs> um, well, I think we're, I think we're in a bit of a, I think we're in a bit of a, a, a turmoil time and a, a bit of a, a time where, you know, we don't really quite know what's going on with the world. Um, and so, I think this is one way that we can kind of step out of that zone, step out of thinking about the news and, and being troubled within ourselves. And, and this is a place where I know as musicians, we can, we can channel, channel this essence when we're on stage, which is why we kind of put a lot of work into making the stage look nice and having these lights and having it be a spectacle. So that when, when you're up there and you're just, everything sounds good and it feels good and you're up there with your friends, uh, it, it feels like you're in a transformational kind of event. And we, we hope that the audience and people who are participating in it get to feel that as well. And it allows them to, to step away from, step away from you know, the troubles of the world for a moment and, and celebrate with other human beings. Hmm. So for you, is it, is it all about the music and, and good times? Do you guys have a, is there a deeper message or importance of a safe space or a good community here that, that is important to you guys to create? Yeah, we, we try to be as inclusive as possible. So, you know, there's musicians of all caliber that are coming to perform at these events. Um, we, we don't really discriminate against anyone. Even, even if you are a beginner musician, we, we, we welcome everyone. We, we've had kids come up and play who have never even sung songs before. We let them play the drums. We let them hop up on instruments. Uh, we've had kids here who have, have come and written a song at Brickyard Beach and performed it like an hour later. Um, so we're, we're really trying to let everyone have that feeling of, you know, if, if they're interested in the arts and they haven't had that opportunity yet to, to you know, to, to experience that, um, we're, we're hoping to kind of provide that space where, where they can. So as far as I know, this is the last Brickyard show of the summer, sadly. Um, what do you guys have planned for the future? Is this, are you moving this to an indoor space? Can people keep coming out to these kind of events? Yep, we will be, uh, we'll, we'll, be, releasing, we'll re be releasing information uh, as the time goes on, but we are planning to move our Brickyard Wednesdays to an indoor location. Um, there's going to be new amenities available on the island, uh, and we hope to be using those pretty shortly. Uh, later this month uh, or early October, uh, we'll, be, we'll be moving this indoors. Um, so this is one of Gamma's programs. We also have the Unplugged, as I mentioned. Um, that is also going to be moving into an indoor venue. We'll be continuing our shows in community halls on different islands as well. Um, and indoor locations uh, around the Gulf Islands. Yeah, I heard you guys were t kind of taking this on the road. Can you talk a little bit about, is it an upcoming tour? Is it your band or is it uh, an open mic session for everyone that's, that you're taking on the road? Yeah, so we actually do a little bit of both. So we, we, we take the band on the road a lot of the times, but the kind of the umbrella organization, Gamma, uh, the Gabriel Assembly of Musical Artists, we, we, we run the programs through that, through that name. Um, and sometimes we'll bring other artists with us on the road. Um, we, we've been meeting people on these tours, and so we will bring these musicians with us. We'll call them up and say, hey, we're, we're coming to your island. Do you want to play with us here? Or, you know, we're coming to Victoria, we're coming to Vancouver and Nanaimo. Um, and then we're able to kind of muster up these, these, these different bands and different artists and, and take these shows on the road. So there, there's a lot of artists on Gabriel. I understand it actually has one of the highest per capita 
of all places in Canada for artists. What are some of, as, as an artist yourself and a community organizer, what are some of the challenges that artists face here? Well, I definitely think it's, it's difficult. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, I don't think any of us who are organizing these events, we don't treat it like it's going to pay all the bills. Um, at, at, our, at our level of what we're doing, uh, it doesn't pay all the bills realistically. Um, this is a labor of love. It's something we enjoy doing for the community. Um, you know, it'll, it'll give us a little bit of money at the end of the day, um, but based on you know, a lot of the rent prices and everything on these islands, uh, it doesn't it, it doesn't doesn't make up for that. Um, as an artist, I think what we're doing, we, we want to do it as work, um, but I, I think I think these days it is a bit difficult to treat it as a, as a full time job. So supplementing that with another another work. Uh, fortunately, on these islands, um, there are a lot of elderly people who are needing help. There are a lot of people who have big land um, that are looking for people to hire for different odd jobs, uh, whether it's clearing bramble or building different buildings on, on people's property. Um, you know, a lot of people here need help. So there's, there's a lot of side jobs that artists can do to supplement uh, their work. Hmm. If you would like to check out some of the work that we're doing, we have a website for the band. It's called theinfiniteatom.com. Uh, our, our group Gamma, which is the Gabriel Assembly of Musical Artists, you can find our Facebook page, which is called Gamma Collective. There's both a page where we release all the information about upcoming shows and programs, and then there's also a group, uh, like a Facebook group, where people can post all their videos from Brickyard, uh, from these different programs, um, a lot of people are taking videos when they're, they're watching our shows, so they post them on there. And so that's kind of a good hub to, uh, to find a lot of our content. Um, that's about it. All right. And uh, people can watch out for Brickyard in, indoors. What are you calling it? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Not really. We, we, we don't, we you don't can't have... take the beach with you. No, no. <laughs> we're, we'll, be, we'll be updating the name and we'll be bringing back Brickyard Beach in the summer of 2024. Um, so. As long as we're on the island, we are going to be running this event every summer. Uh, it starts around late May, early June, uh, and it goes till uh, early to mid-September. Uh, that's what we did last year, that's what we've done this year, um, and we'll be continuing to do it uh, as long as the community is, is intrigued in it and engaged and, and wants this program to happen. We've, we've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of positive feedback about this event. Um, so as long as the community is interested, we will, we will keep trying to run programs that the community wants to be a part of.